Okay. I'm almost there. Um, just let me move this aside. Okay. All right. So, welcome to Show and Tell. I'm Billy. I'm in New York City, and I have three other knitters with me today. I'm going to ask them one at a time to take turns, introduce themselves, and tell us where they are dialing in from today, because I think they're all over the world. I'm not really sure. So Nancy, go ahead. I'm Nancy Strange. I'm in Lubbock, Texas. I've been so, uh, knitting for 50 years. Hey, Wallace. Hi, well, my name is Dawn, but I'm Wallace. Clement on Ravelry. I'm calling in from England, um, the county of Dorset on the south coast, and it's just after eight o'clock in the evening. And I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, so I'm going to let you do that. Okay, hi, I'm Sean, and um, I'm also over in the UK. I'm in the South Wales Valleys. Um, and yeah, it's just gone 8 p.m. over here, and we've had probably the hottest day of the year so far, I think. So we've been very blessed. Beautiful sunshine, so. Yes, it's afternoon here. And unfortunately, they're doing construction upstairs for me. The last time I did one of these live things, they were doing this. It's not as bad today. I don't know if you can hear it. So I might go on mute from time to time. Anyway, we are all here because we are going to knit the genie from Susan Crawford's Shetland Vintage Project. And I think we should go around and say, if we have purchased our yarn, what type of yarn we're going to be using. Um, let's start with that. We'll keep going around and around and read a variety of things to talk about. So let's just go in the same order to keep it easy. Nancy, go ahead. Okay. I, uh have ordered the uh, the kit, but it's not here yet. So I ran down to Joann's and picked up some, uh, well, just baby cotton, uh, just to, you know, kind of do a, a dry run. It's not gonna be, you know, the same. Uh, I just picked up some random colors and, you know, stuck them in ABCD uh, uh, plastic bags and plan to just, you know, do one just to kind of familiar my, familiarize myself with the stitches and everything. That seems like a good idea. Is it lace weight or it's just regular, like a fingering or something heavier just to get the- Just a real part? inexpensive, uh, it's a, I think it's a three weight cotton, just, just something, I'm gonna to try to get it to the point, you know, to scale where it <coughs> will fit my granddaughter who's 12. And- uh, So you're not on a size one needle like I am. Yeah, I've got a one. So yeah. Oh, you are? Oh, oh so it is thin. Okay. It's, like I say, it's, it's quite a bit bigger than lace yarn, but uh, I think it'll produce something. Okay. All right, Dawn. Yes, I'm using uh, West Yorkshire Spinner's Exquisite Lace Yarn. I don't know whether you can see that. It would be nice to see the colors. Can you hold it up to your camera? Show you the colors. These colors, can you see them? Yes, move it around a little so we can see all of them. Move it up, up. Yeah, okay, I got the idea, generally. So you also didn't go with Susan Crawford's colors. Neither did I. No, I've chosen different colors. Um, she's got quite a lot of yellow in her uh, top, so um, yellow doesn't suit me. So uh, I went for different colors. I felt that yellow wasn't going to suit me either, so I went with different colors, but I'll go after you. Sean, is that how? John, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I struggled a bit with deciding uh, on what will to go for, but I did. I ended up going for a lopi or lopi 
which I've seen a lot on um, a lot of YouTube videos. I don't know if you can see that one. Um, and it's pronounced Einband. Um, it is a two ply. Um, I didn't go with the yellow scheme either. So I've gone for sort of like a dark and a light gray as my main um, background color, I suppose, uh, and a cream. And then I've just gone for a bit of a, I suppose, oh, fa fairly, tradi fairly traditional um, mix of, hold on, of colors otherwise. So I didn't actually find it particularly easy um, trying to understand how the colors would work together. I don't know whether anybody's got any advice on that if you're looking to change color schemes on Fair Isle. Um, but I did, I spent quite a lot of time on that, to be honest, so. Well, I'm in this right alongside of you. I have never done this before. I've never done anything I, that had more than three or four colors. So, and I'm, I, I swatch, I generally do swatch for gauge, but I never swatch like I swatched for this. So it's not very pretty, it's not very neat, I started here, I wanted to do, I just did a little bit of ribbing at the bottom because I wanted to see how my ribbing was even going to look. I wanted to know if I was in the right ballpark. And then I started combining my colors in this combination and in this combination and that combination and then another way up here. And then, you know, there are those light sections. I tried those a couple different ways. I hated both of these. I really did not like how much hot pink there was. I should show my colors. Um, I, I, I'm well into it. I'll show you my sweater too, but I bought these cones because my last project I had used, let me show you, my, last pro, my very last project that I also did a knit along of was this yarn mm -hmm. and I held it triple. Now, there is a method called Navajo knitting where you take it and you do something and you come up with three strands and you just keep pulling more and, and doing three strands. But I was afraid because I had never worked off of a cone before. People were suggesting, well, just buy three cones. So I have three of these and this is how much I have left over on each of the three cones. So I thought, well, I may as well use this as one of my nine colors why not? And then I tried to do a light color where she was using a light and I tried to do dark colors where she was using a dark so I would get the same kind of effect. It was hard to make out, you know, without having her, her pattern already in front of me, it was really hard to make out. I went to um, other people's Ravelry pages who had made it from the kit and some people had photographs of their package with their yarns and still it was a little bit tricky, but I, I took a chance and I chose all of these colors, some dark, some light. And there's one color that's really the main color that you use most of. So this was gonna be my main color. It seems like her main color is that sort of pale yellow. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but um, so yeah, after doing that swatching, I sort of narrowed it down to like certain colors would be in the XO section and the other colors would be in the more pastel bands. So I am well underway. I, I couldn't wait for today. I finished my last sweater and I made a quick little sleeveless thing on I think a size six needle. So it whipped up really fast. And then I had nothing to do except the things that are in time out that I wasn't really excited to do much with. So I went ahead and I got started and oh, here's, yeah. what, here's where I'm at so far. But it's very slow going. Mm -hmm. I, I had to order size one needles. I didn't own them. Has anybody else knit with size ones before? I work with them a lot. Really? I do. I, what I like to work on is uh, baby clothes. And so I, they call for them a lot. And I do a lot of uh, chemo caps. And I use, I use my ones a lot. I have several pair, actually. 
Well, when I went through my needles, my old needles from 25 years ago when I used to knit and I, I've returned to knitting just in the last couple of years, I did have one number one needles US straight. And I also had a circular pair, but they were very small like for doing a neckline. So I ordered the chow goose. This is interchangeable. I ordered the tips from one vendor and the thin teensy cable, you can hardly even see it, from another vendor. And I got them both in and assembled it and luckily everything fit together. It's my first experience. Um, I don't mind it. I, I have this new philosophy, which is I'm running out of real estate. <laughs> my closet is only but so big and I can only fit I don't know how many sweaters. I just can't keep knitting and knitting a sweater a month. I'll run out of room. I mean, I already feel like I'm spread too thin. So I estimate that this is gonna take me a very long time so I won't have a lot of output, which I'm very happy about. Has anyone else started? No, other than doing the gauge, that's it. Do you want to show us your swatch, Sean? And then Wallace, I want to see what you've done too. I, so I've done, um, I've actually done two, two swatches, but I've only used one, this will be the main color. Um, I actually started on a 2.25 mil needle, which I think is your size one, I think, which is what was recommended. Um, but it was knitting, um, there, were, there were 36, 36 stitches per four inch, not 40. Um, 46. Uh, yeah, 30, 36. Um, but I think the rows were, were sort of coming up about right. So I oh. thought I'd, I'd go down needle. I'd, I'd, I went to actually to a two mil needle. Um, but then with that, even though I was probably getting the, st the stitch number right in the four inches, um, my rows were way off. It was some, I was something like about six rows short uh, across the four inches. Um, which I thought was it was going to affect actually how the fair aisle looked then, wasn't it? Because it would be mm -hmm. knitting slightly more squashed. So I've decided to go back to the 2.25 mils and I'll just knit a slightly smaller, I'll, I'll drop a size so that even if it knits slightly larger, it should still fit me. So would you think that that's probably the best thing to do or? Don't consider me to be the expert. I'm the ringleader, <laughs> yes, but expert. <laughs> Any, no. Anybody buy me advice? That's what I'm going to go with anyway. I'm going to try it and see if um, see how that works. So I think if it feels right to you, it probably yeah. is. Yeah, I'll give it a go. So, and that's, that's why that's why swatching. Like when I saw this, I thought, well, that has about the right yeah like dimensions. It looked like it was going to be okay on the sweater, and I am getting forty six mm. per four inches. Right. This is so thin. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, some people have hair that's this thick. Mm. So, um, but I think you're using a wool that's toothier, so it's going to fill in more. Mine, let me, let me yeah. uh, go back to a more close up. Um, hmm. I should be able to spotlight myself one second. Hopefully that works, yeah. Um, there is some space between my stitches because it's not real toothy. Right. So I think the people who are working with something that's like a Shetland wool, it's gonna fill in a little. But I'm really fine with this because I wanted something, since it's sleeveless, I wanted something that was going to be really summery. Mm. And I like, I like how, you know, the weight of it feels, even though where my floats are, it's a kind of a double fit, not really double thickness, but sort of double thickness. It still feels thin, like it should be okay on the hottest summer day. So that was my concern too. I was originally looking at alpaca, but then I thought, well, that's going to be really hot. I don't think this is going to be hot. Based on my sweater that I made with this, 
which was tripled, it's not a hot sweater. And this is Merino, 100% Merino. So let's see Dawn's um, her yes. splat. I've done this so far. I'm quite slow because I haven't done a lot of style. Uh, I don't know how much you can see. Oh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. It's real pretty. Can you mm -hmm. see it? I want to try and spotlight you. One second. Um, spotlight. I hope that works. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Uh, it looks great. Lovely. It looks um, very so, nice. Uh, the yarn I'm using is 80% um, Falkland Island wool and 20% mulberry silk. So it's got a silky sheen, but it's still quite sticky. So uh, it sticks together nicely to do the, the Fair Isle. But I'm very slow at Fair Isle because I've only done it twice before. So this has taken me a long time. <laughs> and I think I might get behind as we go along because, well, it just takes ages. Mm. But it's lovely to see every time you uh, knit around, you can see the pattern emerging and it's really, it's really nice to see. I feel that way too. I feel like it's very exciting. It takes me quite a while to do one round. I timed it today. I think I'm about a half an hour, maybe a little more for one round of a solid color. So it's certainly yes. going to take me more when I'm switching. And I hold the yarn in two different hands. Um, it takes so, me about the same, yes, the same amount of time for me. I only, I only knit the English way. So it's, it's longer the English way because um, you can uh, have a yarn in each finger, can't you? But I do everything with one hand and throw, throw the yarn with my right hand. It might not be so much slower because with my right hand, you know, it's a little bit cumbersome. I don't have the yarn uh, tensioned as well as it is on my left hand. But based on that, I calculate that this is going to take me over 100 hours. And I've already, uh, I mean, still 100 hours to go. And I've already spent, I think, about three weeks to get to here. And I've been monogamous. So this is going to be taking us a long time, which brings me to discussing what do we think about how often we should meet? I think we should talk about that. How often would be too often and how often would be not often enough? Anybody I have thought? Something thoughts? maybe like three weeks. Uh... In two weeks, I don't think I'd get a great deal done because it takes such a long time. Uh, two or three weeks. Uh. Last time we did every two weeks, but it was a shorter project. And in two weeks, you could accomplish a lot. You could knit a sleeve maybe in two weeks or so. Um, this, I think three weeks, unless somebody feels strongly otherwise, I think three weeks is probably going to feel more right. You'll feel like you've accomplished something before we meet again. Because really? like Sorry. I said, I think it took me like three weeks to get this far. And that's mm. the ribbing is not hard because you're not changing colors. I mean, you're changing on the round, but you're not changing within a round. So I think that's faster knitting than trying to look at the chart and figure out, you know, and counting and all of that. But I agree with Dawn, it's very exciting. I mean, I, I finished the first section after the ribbing and I'm just beginning the lighter section. I'm so excited. I mean, I have a pretty good idea for my swatch of how it's going to look. But I'm excited to see it materialize next to this. Like, I want to see really how it's going to look right up against this. Because I have not seen this exact combination before in my swatch. There's a lot of different permutations and combinations. Each one of those bands is different. 
So I didn't swatch all the different ways because the swatching took me, that swatch that I showed you, I don't know where I put it now. Oh, it took me, I think it took me a week to do that swatch, just to figure out like which colors, where's the light, where's the dark. Do you guys know about yarn dominance? I didn't hear you what? Yarn dominance. Supposedly this, this is a stranded knitting concept that oh. um, when you're using two colors, one will come forward a little bit more and one will recede a little more. So one can look a little bit um, stronger. Mm. And I think the general rule of thumb is to keep the dominant color on the left side. In any event, I think it's good to be consistent. So, you know, if you're using like, let's say black and white, choose one to keep always on the left. Don't keep alternating. I think it also helps your floats to be neater, tidier. Um, but I think the look that you get is more consistent if you keep the yarns not crisscrossing all the time. By the way, here are my floats. I'm so happy. I'm so proud of them. I think they, I think they look really good. <laughs> I don't know what I did with my swatch. That's the funniest thing. Oh, it fell. That's where it went. Dawn, could I just ask you, when you were choosing your colors, how did you go about deciding what would work? Uh, well, I chose my colours from the, um, ex this exquisite yarn from West Yorkshire Spinners and they only have about 14 colours in the range and I couldn't find nine that I really liked to go into one garment. So mm. I've only got seven colours, uh, which mm. makes it a bit simpler when you come to the um, colour work. Uh, mm. But I, I tended to go the darker colours in the pattern, I used my darker colours and the lighter colours in the pattern, uh, Susan Corbett's pattern, I used my lighter colours. So you get the same balance of dark and light. Mm. Right, okay. And uh, because I've only got seven colours, I had to merge three of them. So uh, oh. in the original pattern, there are three shades of yellow and all those shades of yellow, I've used one colour for those. So it doesn't look, so you can't really tell that I've um, cheated a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay, that's too small. So it's A, yeah. H and I. You know that all the colours are alph alphabetical. A, yeah. H and I, I'm using as one colour. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm. But basically, it's uh, really your preference um, mm. where you want to put the colours because um, that's what's exciting about it. You don't have to stick to the colours in the pattern. Mm. Yeah. Well, I've yet Would to start, like so... You've yet to start, yes. Yeah. So you've still got time to think about it. It took me about two or three hours, actually, over a couple of days to decide mm. where I was going to put the colours because, mm. um, well, it's difficult. It's, it's complicated. Difficult. I, yeah. I definitely, I mean, I, I just can't emphasise enough. Mm. I, I really think that you should swatch mm. to see how it's going to look. Because if I hadn't swatched, if I had just gone ahead and knit this, I would be really unhappy. And mm. once you're committed to this, well, I know you're not going to rip it out. Yeah. So yes, it's true. If you knit one band and you didn't like the color combination, you could change up your color combination on all the other bands. But this is like, too big a time commitment, I feel. I, I mean, you gotta really consider you're probably looking at more than a hundred hours. Mm. I think that's like probably twice as long as I've spent on any other project, maybe even three times as long. So it's yeah. better to do this. I mean, you don't have to do all of this. I, I did the lighter thing. That's like not so important because they're all kind of pale. But for these, like you could see this and this, I really didn't like. Mm -hmm. So I made sure not to use the high pink in that section. I'm going to run the high pink through here because mm -hmm. they're really like to me, 
it looked too loud. It didn't look traditional enough. Mm-hmm. And you have some bright colors. So yeah. you might end up with a color in a place where you're not really happy with it. Yeah. I think it's worth it. I mean, just to do like a few of these to get a feel. The other possibility, which I tried and it didn't, it didn't really help me visualize it so much. There's a website called Stitch Fiddle. Dot com stitch fiddle stitch fiddle.com where you can create your own charts mm-hmm. and they have a menu where you can select colors and you can actually use like that color wheel thing and get your own colors so i did that i mean i, I i'm not prepared I, I could have probably shown a screenshot here or share my screen and shown that maybe next time i'll do that um but so I, I laid my colors in that and then I put them into the chart. So I got sort of a feel mm-hmm. for it, but it's not like it's not like seeing it in the actual yarn. Like the pink looked okay in the chart. But still that stitch fiddle thing, it's it's a good website to know about. Mm-hmm. So getting back to next meeting is this a good time for everyone because two of you are in the uk where it's nighttime do you want to meet earlier is that better for you it suits me to be honest dawn fine fine this is good yeah so is it eight o'clock or nine o'clock there eight 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 thirty now but Okay, so it's not, yeah, I mean, some people who were further into Europe, there's an extra hour for, it must be like a different time zone. So, okay, but that's good. And Nancy, this is a good time slot for you? Anytime's good for me. Okay, (laughs) okay. Um, Let's see, what else do I wanna ask you all? Have any of you got your buttons yet for the ribbing at the top? I got mine, I saw the ones I wanted, so I got them straight away. <laughs> so I'll just show you. Oh, let me see you. Right you. Oh, wait one second. Can you see them? Yeah. They look like what she has in the kit. That's right. They look like the ones on the actual pattern. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'd get them straight away. Uh, but it'll be quite a while before we use them because we've got to knit the garment first. And then the steaking. Steaking, I've never done steaking before. Neither so. have I. <laughs> this is gonna be a first, but at least it's not all the way down the front. It's just the neckline and the arm openings. So I just recently interviewed a woman who does a lot of Fair Isle and she does it flat. She doesn't do it in the round. I said, no problem purling back with all the floats. She's like, no, no problem at all. But because the pattern called for it this way, I thought I don't want to drive myself crazy trying to improvise. And I'll have the experience for the first time of steeping. And I do have my grandmother's very old Singer sewing machine. I haven't opened it for over 20 years maybe more. It hasn't been oiled. It hasn't been cleaned. I don't, it should work. I mean, it's an old work course. So I think I'm going to try and like practice on something else and maybe do it on the machine instead of by hand. I don't know. I'm nervous about it. I would hate to see this whole thing unravel. This is a lot of work. Um. I should say if there are people watching this, it doesn't seem like there are many people watching it now, but over the next few days, hopefully there will be people seeing this and please tell your friends. But if you're seeing this and you want to jump on board with us, there's a few places where you can find us. First of all, in the show notes below, I have some information you know, where you can find the information that will get you to join us on YouTube. Um, or find me on Ravelry or Instagram, just shoot me a private message and you know, I'll try and help you. 
but I'd love to see more people try this. There are people out there who have purchased the kit. I see them on Ravelry. They've purchased the kit. It's a big investment. And they haven't knit the sweater. So I thought for sure those people would want to join in the fun. The last knit along I did, the general response, and there weren't many of us, but the general response was the people felt like it inspired them to keep knitting, to stay up with the other knitters. No pressure, but just a little bit of um, inspiration, motivation. And it really kept us going. I mean, I am pretty sure that with that sweater that I did, which was all over lace, cardigan, and buttons, buttonholes, I'm pretty sure that I would have gotten to a certain point, like maybe the button bands and been like fed up with it. I've been working on this for eight weeks already, monogamously. I probably would have put it aside, but I felt a responsibility to the other people to keep going. And I hope that you'll find that too, that you know, coming together and comparing notes periodically is gonna sort of all keep us moving forward. Cause I, I would imagine that something that's this much work could easily be like put aside to work on something else and come back to it. But let's see if we can all, you know, stay the course and keep going and be supportive of one another. I mean, that's, that's my hope for this. So I, I hope the rest of you feel the same way too. Yeah. Can I ask, yeah. what, what size have people decided to knit? I'm, I'm knitting size three because I really would be a size two in this pattern, but it does say in the pattern notes to have some positive ease. So I, mm. I went for the size three. So I'm just wondering what you thought about that. I'm also knitting a size three. Um, with the ribbing, I added stitches because I'm bottom heavy. So I wanted to have a little more wiggle room in there. I didn't want it to be tight. Um, at some point I will slip some of these stitches onto waist yarn so I can try it on, make sure. I mean, right now, you know, I'm still in my waist area, which is relatively smaller than the rest of me. So I'm pretty sure this part will fit, but as I get a little further up, I, I do want to make sure because it's summer top for me, I do want it to be a little bit blousier. So I'm hoping that the size three, which is 41 inches and I'm 38. So I'm hoping that'll be enough. I'm doing I, size three also. Yeah, sorry. I, I was actually going to knit the size four. Um, but based on my stitch gauge, I'm going to drop down to size three because I know that it's, I'm, it's going to be knitting larger than I was expecting. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Nancy? Uh, I was going to do this uh, cotton in, a, in the size one, but I, I had planned when I get the kit, when the kit arrives, to do three. Uh, I the think it comes in different sizes, right? Did you order a size three kit? Yes, I did. I ordered a, th a three kit, but uh, I think this little muslin, uh, <laughs> it, it's not going to really matter much. I'm just trying to get the hang of the, the right. Fair Isle thing. I did a Fair Isle like 30 years ago, uh, but it... That was all before YouTube, and I think I could have done a better job. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, there are some wonderful tutorials. Oh, yeah. I love Suzanne Bryan. That's how I learned to do the two hands. I, I do know how to knit both ways, continental and English style, because I learned one when I was very young, and then a couple years later, I learned the other. So I know both of them since childhood, and I feel comfortable in both. But knowing sort of like seeing how somebody does it and especially when you have longer floats with Fair Isle, there's only, you know, a few stitches. So you don't really have to worry, but she has a whole technique on if it's like 10 or 20 stitches and you want to catch your floats periodically, there's a whole um, sequence of steps that you go through to make sure that you're catching it right 
and I've done that on another garment. So yeah, YouTube is like it's amazing, amazing. Whatever you need to find out how to do. I was just repairing last night our 60 year old stove. All of a sudden something overflowed and the pilot light was on, but that one burner, I couldn't get it to work. So I went to YouTube and I saw a couple little things that people were doing. I mean, I had repaired it once before and my tricks that I did the first time weren't working this time. So I went to YouTube and it's working. <laughs> I, I, I'm a thrower, but with the arthritis, I'm trying to force myself to do it continental. And it's it's really hard when you've been knitting so long one way to switch, but yeah, it's it's great all the things you can learn. It really There's is. also Portuguese knitting, which I've never done, but I understand people who have problems with their hands, like pains, do that because it's something hanging around your neck and you're using different muscles. So yeah, look that up on YouTube, see if you know that might be a better solution for you than even continental. I love knitting continental. I'm so happy that I that I was taught <laughs> really early. Okay, I, I mean, unless there's anything else that you want to throw out and talk. I, about. I have a question that's not really related. How do I get my name on there? Mine says Zoom user. Does, oh, uh, does okay. I can, all, can, I can tell you that. The, do I say Nancy on y'all's or Zoom user? It says Zoom user. In the I, don't upper, have, I have no idea how to change that. I'm going to tell you. In the upper right hand oh, corner okay. of your screen, there's All three right. little dots. All if you right. click on those three little dots, there's a, a drop down menu and it says rename. And if you click that, you can type in whatever name you want to be. Now, Just what? Now? In the now upper what? right hand corner of your screen, yeah. three little dots. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I see that. And in that drop down menu, it says rename. 